Okay, so from one finance up to another finance up. Can everyone hear me and can everyone see my screen? Yes, perfectly. So, um, so we are the Aviva team, that's what we've called ourselves because we're being sponsored by Aviva. Our personal finance app is called That Girl's Personal Finance App. And in my group, we've got Ashlyn, who was like, my group was just awesome, right? And everybody has said they worked well as a team, but we were an amazing group. I loved working with the girls. Um, Ashlyn was in charge of um, doing our homework, doing our UML diagrams and doing the flux code for our investment um, part of the app, which you'll see in a, a minute. Jessica was in charge of the code for the investment app. Leila was like our Mrs. Organizer. She was like our team lead. She organized as well. Um, made sure that we met We met every week and some weekends as well. Um, wrote our um, documentation as well. I was in charge of, and she also did the unit testing for the um, investment side of the app, which you're going to see in a minute. I was in charge of writing the code for the savings section and doing the unit testing um, for that. Sophie did the flux um, bit of our code for the savings um, section. YC, who is currently on a flight to Canada for work, but she can't be here with us today, did the budgeting part of um, our um, app. So we worked really well um, as a team. So um, our app, the motivation behind it was we tried to create a personal um, finance application that will empower individuals and give users um, the tools to effectively manage their savings um, and investment. We talked about um, making it very user friendly and creating a platform where which people can easily um, handle their financial um, affairs, irrespective of their background, their experience levels. So we wanted to make it accessible to everyone. So obviously, because of the cost of living crisis and the light of the cost of living crisis, we recognize that there's a, a lot of growing anxiety when it comes to financial management. So our application has got a selection of tools that will help users track their spending and their investments and their savings um, as well. So we've got the key features for our app is it's got a savings section where people are users are able to determine the amount of interest they can earn over a specific period of time if they put some money away. We've also got a budgeting section. This is like a very cool section as far as I'm concerned. You upload your pay slip and a test file of your expenses and it gives you a monthly breakdown of um, your spending. Then we've got the investment app, which another amazing app. It tracks and manages various investments such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And we used um, the Alpha Advantage um, API for it. So. I will now pass you over to my various team members so that I can tell, talk to you about our app. And first up is Ashley. Thank you, Oma. This was the UML diagram that we put together before we started writing even a line of code. This was our roadmap for the project where we decided how we were going to structure it and what would be included and what was out of scope. So as Oma's just mentioned, there are three main sections. There's first the savings web page. Um, the idea for this is that it would ultimately link to a SQL database um, where the interest rates of different savings accounts could be stored, read out, and then used to calculate returns on savings. The investments web page um, was where we would look at investments um, that someone would like to select. So you would choose which um, which company you were going to invest in, your value, your number and quantity of, of shares, and um, the back end code would then calculate that and give an output. And then finally, the budgeting uh, section is where you can input a pay slip and expenses and have an output of where you've spent your money that month. The investment section has an API linking into it. So that's the Alpha Vantage API, where you can read out all sorts of details of the stocks. And overarching all of it is the Flask, uh, Flask structure, which um, would provide a web page for each section and also a home page linking them all together, which you'll see later on. 
and obviously for each page, the HTML and CSS files. So as Oma mentioned, YC is not able to join us tonight, but she has recorded a short video um, covering her section, which we'll play next. All right. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk about um, the budget and features of our app and I'm YC. I built this tool because I wanted to have um, like a overview of how much money that I still have at the end of the day and how is my spending actually sort of um, in proportion comparing to my salary. And so with this work, I use um, PDF Plumber to take our information um, from the payslip file, which is in, usually in PDF uh, version when uh, your employer provided to you. And then I use regular expression to sort of map out the information, just necessary ones like salary, tax, um, national insurance contribution. And then um, the next thing is about using uh, pandas to organize a organized data frames. And this is uh, the expense file that's exported out from banks and then the last bit is about using um, Matplotlib to organize information in a very um, intuitive overview. So I designed a graph and a summary table, and I'll show you right now. So this is our app, and then, um, like you, like I said before, the user will be prompt to select their payslip file and also their expense file. Uh, in this case, the CSV and then generate the information out. And then this is the graph and a summary table. Let me just pose it right here. As you can see, like the green part here is, uh, is the uh, salary. And then all the other color bar represents um, different categories of spending. And the summary table has like the calorie and then a specific breakdown of how much value it is. And in this case, you can see that we have um, some more money that we can use to invest or save. And so with that said, I'm going to uh, pass it down to my team and talk a little bit more about saving. Okay, so I'm passing over now to um, Sophie to talk about our savings um, part of the app. Please. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so our savings section is uh, basically like a calculator uh, that determines the amount of interest you can earn on your savings over a specific period of time. It offers two types, which is instant access and fixed bonds. Um, you can input the amount that you want to save, um, how many years you want to save it for, and what the interest rate will be. And once you hit submit, this displays the output on the results page, so how much you'd save over that amount of time. Um, and then the same for fixed bonds. Uh, going forward, rather than having sort of the interest rates displayed on the page, I think ideally it would you know, if we had more time um, to focus on it, we could in improve the Flask code, uh, code so that um, the interest rates could be stored in the database and then they'd be displayed as a drop down on the web page um, instead of you sort of choosing it from the page itself. But that's something, yeah, that we would like to do in the future to improve it. Thank you, Sophie. Okay, I'm now going to pass you over to Jessica to talk about the investment part of our project please okay hello so the investment part actually is the one that uses the alpha a alpha venture api it's actually very very challenging to uh first of all choose the correct api and um, we kind of were looking to use uh google finance and yahoo finance but uh, choosing the first api and especially talking about stocks is um challenging to select the free one that you can use. So when we went with Alpha Vantage API, um, we kind of struggle with, with the correct key of the API that we can use. Um, so we varied between the daily ones and adjusted one and the weekly one. And then uh, when we focused that the API was working, that's when we laid out the code. And then uh, this is what we actually see in the um, in the demo, which is just, you just check the stock symbol and it will give you like the current price. But in the actual code, that's uh, after we got it in the Flask working, if we had a bit more of time, we could have added into the Flask, which was the actual layout of the portfolio, which it takes um, two classes, three classes, sorry. You have um, the investment stock and portfolio. So 
in the investment, you get all the attributes of what you're going to search for uh, the investment. So either your bond, your stock or your mutual fund. And then in the portfolio section, that's where you can add everything that is going to be retrieved. So at the end of it, what it does, the portfolio is gets an insert input of whatever you have. So let's say you have Apple stocks and you have 12 of them and you bought them at $200. And it adds them all together, and at the end it calculates to uh, your overall portfolio. But yeah, like I said, um, doing making that the API was working, uh, we added some uh, try and accept uh, exandling code uh, to see that the API was getting the correct outputs throughout the codes because at the at the beginning the portfolio was not giving like the correct sum, um, and we kind of looking to add in like those uh, exception handling to see where was the uh, API you not know, working. But uh, what we did in the end was get those uh, prices and actually lock them into a value. So uh, that was what you get. And then the end you calculate them. But yeah, that, that's all. I will pass it to my next teammate. Thank you, Jessica. And um, next up is Ashling, who is going to talk about putting um, everything together in a Flux framework. So when we started working on this, we wrote all the Python code, but obviously your average person isn't going to run a Python code to manage their finances. We thought to make it more accessible, the best way to do that would be via a web page. I am using the Flask framework so that we could uh, link in with our existing Python code. So that's what we did. We created the HTML templates for each page um, and wrote the code to link the existing Python code, providing inputs and outputs um, to link in with the user inputs to the web page. So that as you've seen in the videos just gone, you can type in your um, required quantities to the web page. The code will then use those as an input um, and it will output the values that you then see on the results page. We had to work together on that. Obviously, all the pages had to link in, look the same. So our CSS has been standardized across the pages. We use the same template for each page. And we've worked quite closely together, helping each other on creating those uh, Flask templates. Um, I'll now hand over to Leila. Hi everyone. Um, so our testing strategy, um, especially for the investments code, as it was like um, the biggest uh, bit of code that we had, um, we encompassed both unit and integration testing. So we focused on validating the individual classes of the system and the interaction between them respectively. Um, we used the unit test module um, for the suite of tests so including investment, bond, stock, mutual fund, and portfolio classes. Um, so the code using mocks, it mimics the responses of external services. So we're using an API, Alpha Vantage API. So we wanted to ensure that the responses were controlled and reliable. Um, so functional and user testing was achieved through individual test cases for each class. Each test verifies the instantiation and expected behavior of the objects. So we ensured that, um, so for the tests for investment, we ensured that the object attributes were assigned correctly on instantiation. Um, user testing, we indirectly covered in the tests that validated different types of user inputs, such as valid and invalid quantities, or putting in um, the wrong sort of like data type. So we kind of just went through like a selection of things just to make sure that our code was robust and it would be easy to maintain. Um, and for our future work, because we had um, a bit of a, well, it was a very short time to work on such a big idea. Ideally, we wanted to make um, an app that was something that you know, the everyday person could use, especially in light of the cost of living crisis. So just to recap, our initial aim was to create a personal finance application that's not only accessible and user friendly, but empowering for our users. Um, and I'd say that overall, we managed to deliver our essential requirements. So that's the budgeting, budgeting, 
budgeting, um, investment, savings, and an interface to use. But overall, um, we would like to develop more features um, as we grow our skills um, and our confidence, such as adding a database to allow user input to be saved as a validation check, um, using registration and login forms to create and save user data, which can be retrieved, retrieved and improve the usability of the app, um, improve our accessibility solutions. So our UX design for a front end, um, we, we focus primarily more on like the back end logic, but it would be great to just spend a little bit more time on the visual aspects, just to make sure that everyone can use our app and no one's left behind. And of course, um, something that we kind of considered a bit late at the end was security. So optimizing security features by introducing methods for authorization, identification, and encrypting data. Thank you. Thank you, Leila. So before we end, I just want to say, um, for this project, we were basically mainly out of our comfort zones. We've never done, most of us have never coded before, before we joined and um, could first girls, but we worked so well together as a team. We did a lot of research. There were a lot of late nights when Sophie and Ashling were trying to do the um, flux code. And it was like, what are we doing wrong? How is it? Why does it look easy? We watched so many YouTube clips. Like I've lost count of how many YouTube clips. Once I put up my phone, it's YouTube clip on flux. So I, like, I'm, I love that. I love doing it, but I'm sick of it now. So I want my algorithm to change again. Um, when Jessica did our investment um, uh, code, and we couldn't get it to work. It just kept giving us none and zero for our overall portfolio. We spent a lot of time trying to work out um, what was going on. Leila did our unit testing. It was just fabulous. We worked so well as a team. So I'm happy to say that we've actually recruited our first stakeholder. So someone that works in Leila's office is ready to get our app. Like he's ready to start using it. So thank you very much. And I just want to say, well done, girls. Well done, girls. You guys were an amazing team um, to work with. So. We're going to welcome any questions now, if you have any, but thank you.